Hi, I'm Tom Peterson. I'm the Minnesota Department of Agriculture Commissioner. Today we're talking about uh, pollinators and pesticide application. For Minnesota farms and farmers, protecting our pollinators is incredibly important. It may not be to your crop, but it might be to somebody else's crop. And so we always talk about farming together in the state and considering our neighbors. For Minnesota farms and our farmers across the state, uh, use of pesticides is incredibly important to helping us control pests. So whether that's using an insecticide or an herbicide, it's uh, very important that farmers judiciously use those products. Some of our pollinators uh, have been stressed by many things uh, that have been happening, whether it has been use of pesticides or herbicides, pollinator habitat loss, or disease. And so the steps that farmers can take are important because much of Minnesota's agriculture does depend on a healthy pollinator habitat and ecosystem. We always encourage pesticide applicators that have further questions to feel free to contact the MDA or local experts to help them understand uh, how they might be impacting our pollinators. I'm Marla Spivak. I'm a professor in the Department of Entomology in the Bee Research Lab at the University of Minnesota. Pollinators, which are our bees and other insects that visit flowers and move pollen around, are important pollinators of our fruits and vegetables and other crops like coffee and almonds that are so nutritious and important to our diets. There's many kinds of bees, but the one everybody thinks about are honeybees. Honeybees live in huge colonies and they can be managed by beekeepers. So honeybees, arguably, are one of the most important pollinators because they can be transported around to pollinate our fruit and vegetable crops. Pesticides can affect pollinators in various ways. They can be direct or indirect, and a direct effect would be if there's an application of a pesticide directly onto flowers that bees or other pollinating insects are visiting. And it can be indirect if the application is away from the flowers, but it drifts through wind direction. It drifts onto the flowers. I'm Ryan Miller, Crop Extension Educator with the University of Minnesota Extension, and I'm based out of Rochester, Minnesota. Pesticide applicators have a complex job. There are a lot of things to juggle. Insecticides kill insects, and so even though we're targeting a different pest organism, there's the possibility that we, we could adversely impact pollinators or bees. We understand the necessity of using the pesticides. Our concern from the pollinator's perspective is the movement of the pesticide off target or off crop. What I would recommend is to think like a bee or think like a beekeeper. So will you be applying this pesticide in such a way that might negatively affect a beekeeper's colonies? Because their bee colonies are their animals, their livestock. Or will you be applying a pesticide in a way that might affect our native bees, our rusty patch bumblebee, our endangered species, or other native pollinators that are out in the field or nesting in the ground, or nesting in stems? Does the label say do not apply when pollinators are actively foraging in the area? And if so, is there any way to spray earlier in the morning or later at night or dusk when bees are not flying? There's ways that you can protect our pollinators that are easy and that would be so helpful. So it's important to consider pollinators when we make uh, pesticide application decisions. First and foremost, we have to make sure that we need the application. Because if we can eliminate the application, we can eliminate all of the risk to pollinators. To determine whether or not we need to make a pesticide application, we can rely on Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. And that revolves around the world of scouting and identifying pests and determining if we've got a pest that needs to be managed. And that's gonna come down to thresholds. The second thing we do as applicators is to read the label and follow all of the application requirements so that we make the application correctly and mitigate risk that way. There will be very clear instructions as far as uh, when and where to apply a pesticide to help mitigate any risk to pollinators. And there will be specific language of, around temperature inversions as well as time to apply. Most uh, pesticide labels, in particular the, the uh, broad spectrum insecticide, there's some very specific language as it pertains to bees and pollinators. Oftentimes the language will state uh, that we aren't supposed to apply the product to blooming crops or flowering or blooming weeds. Uh, and also uh, it will pertain or have language about adjacent areas that may have uh, blooming plants that pollinators are using. 
Prior to making the application, you need to check the field for pollinator activity, as well as pay attention to any of those adjacent areas that may uh, host uh, pollinators and take into consideration wind speed and direction uh, when you're making your application. If the wind is blowing towards a sensitive area and you see uh, a great deal of pollinator activity, you can pull the plug on the application and, and, and not, not do the, the application to help mitigate some of that risk. So those are, are some pretty explicit things that, uh, that we can incorporate in the decision of when to, when to make an application. Pesticide applicators play an important role in protecting pollinators across the state of Minnesota. The choices that you make as you're out there under the gun and you're busy and trying to get to that next field are incredibly important, but the trainings that you have taken, the trainings that you go through to learn the proper steps to take to protect our pollinators are very important. We hope that this video has helped you think of things and steps that you can take to help increase our pollinators across the state of Minnesota.